So, um, oh, I'm just making sure if I was on the if I was on the right camera, we'd have a good start, wouldn't we? I feel like starting again now. So just to recap then, um, we're going to make the mat. Um, so you can see it now, instead of looking up at my ceiling. And um, we're going to use um, jelly roll strips. Um, just saying yes to my director and producer. I am okay now. I had it on the wrong camera, love. Thank you. He's good. He keeps a check on me. I, it's probably required in all occasions. <laughs> That's because I didn't check before. But uh, you, you got a good picture of my skylights and yeah, it all matters. So anyway, so yes, you need five of these, salvage to salvage, okay? And what you're going to do then is fold it in half. You've already got the, the fold line right in the center of the strip and you're just gonna cut straight across, okay? Which means you'll end up with 10 pieces, right? Now, if, you, if you've done what I like I've done and I've actually mixed all those up. So in other words, if you look, um, if you look at the spotty fabric, that's one part and then the other half is a further along. So you can kind of mix them up. That's the idea. Um, with the big rugs that people are making, they use um, the, whole, the whole width. Um, they don't cut them, okay? Um, so it's entirely up to you. If you're using the same fabric, then go ahead, don't, don't cut them. But anyway, so that gives you your choice, doesn't it? Um, so the other thing was that we need wadding strips two and a quarter inches wide and that makes a huge difference. So instead of it going all the way across the width, it's just that wee bit shorter in the width, um, which means that of course it actually when you, we fold it, and I'll show you all of that, it folds a lot better and a lot easier. Um, you need a scrap for the centre. So in this case, um, I've used some, some denim. Um, and you need some foam stabiliser, just a scrap or the wadding, um, some, some of that lovely soft wadding that you may have lying around. And I do suggest you use a, quite a thin wadding. Um, you don't want that really uh, high loft polyester wadding. That would be quite tricky to sew. Um, this one is a Sawyer wadding or bamboo wadding is very similar. Um, the, um, the other one is the... Uh, let me, I'll think about it in a sec. The um, oh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. It's not important. But the main thing is that it's quite a, a thin wadding. It's enough to give a little bit of bounce to your project, but not enough so you, you get in the muddle with your stitching because it's some. Um, there's a lot of layers that you're going to have to go through. So I'm just going to um, have a look on my page now. I'm just going to re um, redo my page. I'm so glad John came and told me I was on the wrong camera. I've done it so many times, it's unbelievable. Um, so there we are, we're, we're there, I can see now, and uh, we've got some people watching, which is lovely. Well, um, well over 30 people watching. Look, I know it's Doctor Who, I have it on record, and it's called Strictly as well, so I do understand if you're gonna catch this later. So the other thing, if you don't have a design roll, you might well have a fat quarter, um, and that is, the quarter of a meter of fabric but a fat one so this would be a long narrow quarter of a of a meter um, a fat quarter it goes up to the half meter line but then half across and what i suggest you do is find the selvage on your piece let's have a look which is this end maybe it's this end it's one of these ends so find the selvage on your piece and you're going to cut from the selvage all the way across and you're going to do your two and a half inch width across it's, it's usually the widest bit um, but you see it depends on your fabric but but nevertheless you're going to go from the selvage out in as what would be in the middle of your fabric so you can still cut these up um, and you only need 10 so if you don't have a rotary cutter then it's kind of ideal isn't it really so let's just see if we've got any comments and um, Oh, hi everybody. Hi Marge and uh, Margaret and Mary. And um, yes, we, uh, we do need to get sorted, that's for sure. We've got lots of comments here. Lovely. Isn't that super? Um, and we've got well over 40 people watching now, so isn't that lovely? So, I've got my strips already cut. Those are they. So I've got 10 pieces already cut and I hope I've stacked them in the right order. And what, what I'll do is I'm going to make a, I'm going to show you like a mini version and then I've got all my 
piece ready to actually stitch together so you can see how that works and I think that's probably that that would take me a long time to get the fabric and the wadding to this stage all right but I'm going to show you now how, how to do that because once you've done that and once you've mastered that you, you're good to go and actually if you want to make a big rug go ahead <laughs> um, I, I wish I had enough time to be able to do that so the first thing you're going to do is think about what's going to go in the middle and like I say with mine I had it as an oval but you could use a circle in the one that I showed you I sent you the link uh, on the YouTube um, you when you actually start off with your um, mat or your rug or whatever you're going to make you actually use the the piece that we're going to end up with shortly to actually create that center part now I, I thought this through and I thought mm, I think that I think I could make this look a bit easier for everybody and certainly easier for me so I've cut a front and a back and I've cut a piece of the bosal foam when um, Crafters Companion do this as well um, or you could just use wadding um, I'd suggest you do a couple of layers because the actual puffiness of the, the tube bits <laughs> um, would stand too proud if you just have one layer so I suggest you do too so we're going to stitch that together in a sec um, I've got my a uh, couple of strips ready now that's my spare so these are the strips I'm going to do and I've already cut, cut one piece of wadding it's just as an example but I, there's a couple of things I just want to run through with you first of all if you've got and you can see this is really scruffy I'm going to change it so you can see a little bit better so this is a really scruffy mat and if you're cutting wadding um, I suggest you always use a really scruffy mat to actually cut your wadding on because it embeds itself into the mat and yes you can wash it out and you can sort of look I'm rubbing it and it's all coming away but if you have got a, an old spare mat this has been painted on and sprayed on and goodness knows what else then it's it's good one to sort of keep to actually um, use you cut your wadding now the other thing you can do is to, to actually turn your mat so it's that way around and then you can get a longer piece on there should you wish now I've been cutting about four layers of wadding at a time um, I've got this hopefully sort of fairly lined up now it's nice if you can get the two and a quarter inches wide um, but if you can't manage that you could draw on this and cut with scissors um, but to actually get a rotary cutter through um, all these layers is tricky and it can be done but you need just a little bit of patience and just keep I, I need to stand up and you just need to sort of work it through and just sort of keep pushing it through those layers so you can see it's actually quite tough to do so sort of backwards and forwards backwards and forwards cutting my way through and we've done it so that's great so let's just get get that out of the way uh, hi Louise hi Janice hi Lisa so we've cut the the wadding and if we bring in our pieces ready that we're going to use and now you see I can I, in a moment I can get rid of this and use my nice clean mat for my stitching so if we if you have a look here hopefully you can see and I'll lift it up if you can't let's just choose this little piece if I put that on there I'm going to hold it up so you can see you can see that it's just a wee bit shorter or less wide than the actual fabric itself okay so you can see how that's supposed to look but the first thing we need to do before we do anything is to actually stitch our 10 pieces together now I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do I'll stitch two and then you'll see you'll have enough information then to make more okay so what you need to do you need to do a 45 degree angle on this now you mustn't worry about that if you feel that's just a little bit out of your league then just just go end to end just go end to end and it's something that you can learn another time okay it's not uh, it's not anything you need to worry about and hopefully you can see that so um, I tell you what, I'm going to use a mauve because you'll see that a little bit better. 
there we go so can you see if you wanted to you could just do an end to end like that um, and that's perfectly acceptable if you feel that a 45 degree is too much for you so the first thing we need to do is to I'll do this 45 degrees so um, that, that's nice and flat on my mat and I'm just going to lay that other piece right side down onto the onto the blue so the mauve is facing onto the blue and it's right sides together okay and I'll put a little pin in there now what you could do is draw a line I'm going to hold this up so you can see can you see how that's just overlapping a little bit and I'm got, you can draw a line from there all the way across to here so if you're not confident with your stitching then you can do it like that you can just draw a line okay but I'll just pop that under the machine and I'll get my iron on so we're, we're good and ready there we go just switch that on I've been told I mustn't keep it there so I'll have to move it in a minute <laughs> so I'll bring in the beast and so all I'm going to do now is just stitch from that little corner to the other little corner and don't don't run over your pins pull that out uh, now hopefully you can see let me just do it so I bring this in a little bit more okay so you can see I've got about a quarter of an inch overlapping there and the same the other side and I'm just literally going to go from corner to corner so oh, let's just get things right so here we go all the way across That's not like my bobbin. That's going to do that the whole time now. You know why? I haven't threaded it properly. It's far too clever, this machine. Drives me potty. So, all we're going to do now is we're going to cut about a quarter of an inch away from there. So what I tend to do is I tend to sort of go up a little bit and then come across a little bit and chop the top off okay and then that's my 45 degree angle done can you see how neat that looks so it's something that you might want to try so I'm just going to run my iron over that and flatten out that seam there we are make sure the iron's on now I might change that bobbin you know because if I don't that'll bleep all the way through which will annoy me and certainly annoy you so let's just pop, pop it in again. Um, <laughs> this is one of the joys of having a machine that has a, a much, much higher intelligence level than me, um, that it uh, tells me all the time when I'm going wrong. Whereas if, if it was just me telling myself, well, I really would have myself right all the time. So hopefully <laughs> that has sorted the problem out. If it hasn't, we'll just have to put up with bleeping. So there we are. So what you're going to do now is that you're going to stitch all of these together. So you'll have 10 pieces all in a long, long piece, um, one long, long strip. Now this is where you bring your um, wadding in, your wadding piece. Now again, because I'm using my lovely old mat, um, and this is such a joy to keep this specially for this sort of job, is to, um, to use it for my stick and spray. Now normally I would always spray my wadding, I would never spray my fabric, but because it, this is such sticky stuff, I don't want to get myself in a, a pickle with, with holding this because it's sticky, so I am going to spray my fabric. But normally I would always say spray your wadding, but it just means I can look, place that down on there beautifully um, with no bother at all, and then I can just bring it along. now. Let's just do a little bit more. If you're having to join strips, which undoubtedly you will, um, all you need to do, some people would want to hand stitch this or machine it together. Um, you know what? If you've got lots of time, then go ahead. But because we're using stick and spray, or you could use a fusible wadding, you know, a wadding that has a, a, a fusible back to it that you can iron on, then that's great as well. Um, but all I do, literally, is just touch it with the other piece, and that piece is just a little bit wider, but it makes no difference. And I literally just 
bring it together. Um, and it, and it's, it's perfect, it's absolutely perfect, can you see? And, and that's not going to budge because that's all been glued on. And that makes everything so much easier for you when you come to do the, the next bit, okay? So now we can, once we've put all our strip on, it, and it takes a little while to do 10 pieces, I can assure you, um, then you can go on to the next bit and you can get your clean mat out, which is lovely. Always a joy to have a clean mat. Right, let's see if there's any questions from anybody. So I won't be answering questions about work because this is my, let's just go back to here, because this is my um, my own personal um, Facebook Live. So um, I won't be answering questions about work. I may put in the comments afterwards because this is, this is just mine. Okay, this is about, it's all about me. Um, <laughs> sounds bad, doesn't it? Um, so we've got some lovely comments here. Let me just see if I can get some of them up. Um, will you post instructions for this on your blog? Um, I actually don't have a blog, Janet, um, but uh, you'll have the Facebook Live forever on my Facebook page to refer to, and I hopefully I'm going nice and slowly so you can pick it up. All the instructions, the measurements and all of that sort of thing I've given to you already, so that's all done. And to be honest with you, that's all you need. It's so easy, I promise you. Um, so, so there we are. So let's see. I'm not, not seeing all of them. So let's see if I can see all of them. Now I've lost it completely. Goodness knows what happens. Um, yeah, so, so really, Janet, I feel that we don't, we don't really need to do that. Um, so let, let me know if, if, if you're lost on something. Uh, that's probably the best thing to say, isn't it? So, um, I need to still do my oval, so I'll do that in a sec. So the next thing is I'm going to bring my ironing mat in. So if we just do a recap, let me switch you back to the other camera in just a second. So the recap is you've cut your uh, design roll pieces in half. So with a design roll, you've got some salvage to salvage, you're going to cut it back down the middle five pieces and then you end up with ten and you're going to mix those up so when you stitch them together no two piece joins onto the other okay if you are making a big rug which is the link that I gave you on the event page if you look at that um, uh, they they actually join their design roll strips up in one long piece because they're making a rather large piece of um, matting on, it goes on the floor rug um, but when if we're just making a small little table mat like this it's sometimes better just to have those small pieces and it, it looks a little bit better so we've done that we've cut our wadding quarter of an inch smaller so it sits nicely on our fabric and doesn't go right up to the edge you'll see why in a sec I've joined two pieces together with a 45 degree angle so that's all good to go and you'll have ten of those all joined together just have a little sip of my um, my fizzy. That's delicious. So the next part of this is to actually get this ready now to, to stitch, okay? To get to this stage, which is the next stage to go onto the onto the mat. So um, initially, when we make something like a bag strap. We tend to fold our piece in half, and I'm going to now swap you over. So we, ne we usually fold this piece in half, so we have a crease line going down um, this edge here, which then makes it easy to bring our strips up into the centre. Quite honestly, if we do do that, it's almost lost because you've got the wadding there. So I, you know what, I really wouldn't bother. So I think you're going to eyeball this, okay? I don't like saying eyeball. It's not a very nice thing to say but you literally are that's what you're going to do so you're going to bring those two edges together I'm going to try and do this so you can see so those two edges just come together kind of kiss they don't they don't lap over they don't overlap they just kiss and then you're going to get your iron now I really recommend that you use a steam iron now and it's not very often you'll hear me say use a steam iron 
or a really hot iron like like actually these little irons get so super hot it's amazing um, because you need that to kind of hold okay so you're going to do that all the way down your your 10 pieces that you piece together now this will take you about 20 minutes to do that that's why I've already pre-prepared mine because it would take a long time Okay, so you're going to do all 10 pieces that you've put together. And then the next stage is to bring, is to fold that in half again. So bring those edges together, okay? And again, you're just going to iron that in place. Um, just to give it a little bit of help. And you're going to do the whole 10 pieces like that, okay? So I'm just going to switch my iron off now so it, I'm safe. Just pop that on my silicon mat. There we go. Now what you could do, oh, I've got a new quilting clip bag, have you seen it? You might have caught the Facebook Live I did this morning, it's amazing. Um, anyway, so, so you could use your quilting clips now, if you want, to hold all this together, because now we're going to machine it. And I'll just show you a little bit, and then I'll get on to doing my oval. So let's just pop that away now. I don't think we need that anymore. So look, that's how we've got, that's the stage we're at, okay? So you can see that I've, let's get it to the end. So I've brought my two outer edges together. Okay, and I'm now I've folded it in half. So with a straight stitch, you're going to stitch as, as near to the edge as you can. Don't get too wound up about that. I wouldn't go any more, don't go any more than a quarter of an inch. Aim for about an eighth of an inch, but don't measure it. Um, just literally, just get those two pieces joined together, okay? So, hopefully my machine will not leap at me. Honestly, it's far cleverer than me. Especially as we started off with the wrong camera angle. Anyway, <laughs> so you're just going to pop it under the machine and just stitch those together. I'll just lengthen my stitch. Now that's the other thing. Um, I would put this on a fairly long stitch. Um, nearly three I've got mine on. This is, this is purely just to hold this together. So, there we go. So you can see now why I said the wadding needs to be quite thin because you're going through, I think I'm catching all of the layers, because you're going through an awful lot of um, fabric here. So I'll just do that little bit. So there we are. So let me just hold it up so you can see that I've just literally stitched those layers together, front and back. That's just stitched together, all right? And that's, that's, um, that's, that's sort of, that's kind of, um, that's it when it comes to actually making the long, long strip that you need to actually make your mat, okay? Now you might want to roll this up in a ball or put it somewhere where the cat's not gonna play with it or the dog thinks it's something they should chew, um, but just have it so it's nice and handy for you. And the main thing is um, don't have it wound too tight. So I'll talk about that as we go along. So with the oval, we need right sides together, but we need to encase our piece of foam. Now I'm going to use my stick and spray. And this, as you know, is only a temporary stick, um, but it's gonna kind of keep it in place when I turn it through um, and then it'll be fine. It'll just stay in place. So again, I'll bring my old mat up, give it a good spray. and then just pop it on the back of my piece. And again, oh, that's not very straight. Let's try that again. And again, I've made it about a quarter of an inch. Well, I haven't cut my ovals very well. I should have put them through the die, die cutting machine. I might trim that a little bit. Um, that will give us, um, if you cut it a little bit smaller, a quarter of an inch smaller, it means that you're not stitching that foam into the seam. Um, so you've got less bulk, which is which is ideal. Um, I just could we could have done a better job than this. I might have picked up the wrong oval because I'm sure I cut it to size before. 
rid of the, the mucky mats. So um, so I put my foam on the wrong side and I'm now going to do right sides together with the other piece and I must leave a turning gap okay so we'll just offer those up and we'll bring it under the machine again and we're just going to we're just literally going to stitch all the way around and leave a little gap somewhere that's uh, what a couple of inches um, and do a locking stitch before you st when you start so oh, let's just try and do a locking stitch without cutting the thread there we go and so you're just going all the way around and always lift up your presser foot and just maneuver that And if you don't want to use a long stitch at this point, because we're stitching on the round, then, then change it to a smaller stitch. But to be honest, we're going to overstitch this anyway. So we've got a little bit of a spare bit going on here. So we'll just, we'll just do that. That'll, that'll do fine. So there we go. Oops. Let's go back. Oh my Lord. There we go. That's it. Oh, phew. So, <laughs> so now we can turn this through. And do you know what? I really wouldn't worry about clipping any of this um, because um, A, you're going to stitch around this and B, you've already got a small enough seam. So I shouldn't worry too much. Uh, don't think I've left myself a big enough gap. So we'll just do a little snippy, snippy there. There we go. That'll do. So all you're going to do is push that through just like you normally would and like I say because because we haven't actually permanently fixed that foam to there it will want to move you've just got to hold it in place the only other thing you could do is to quilt it um, just do some quilting stitches on it to hold it down um, use the permanent stick and stay if you want to um, but quite honestly it does stay put look it hasn't it, only just that it's only moved where the opening was um, and that's pretty much not too bad, <laughs> not too bad. So the other thing we need to do now is just to close that little gap there. And again, I shouldn't worry too much um, about this. Just really just you want to make it neat. Um, so you could hand stitch this if you want to, but I'll just quickly run it under the machine and uh, that'll be fine. Because like I said before, um, we're going to stitch on all of this. So I'm just going to bring my gap together. Now you might not be able to see what I'm doing here. But I'm literally just folding over about a quarter of an inch. I'm not measuring. Um, just to close that gap off a little bit. Um, and if it ends up a little scruffy, then it can go on the back of the mat. Um, which this is definitely going to look a little bit scruffy. So there we go. So that's our oval done and all of our lovely 10 pieces of uh, strips, foamy strips, are going to be placed on top of this so I'm not too fussed how that looks. It looks, it looks fine to me. So the next thing we want to do is to start stitching, the next thing we want to do is start stitching our long piece onto our oval, okay? and. You need to start off, so if I do it so you can see it, um, you need to start off. Now you can see I haven't finished this end off. You could, you could turn that under and make it super neat. It would help if I didn't have any wadding, so we can just snip that away. Um, and you're just literally going to tuck it under your mat and you're just going to ease it out. So that's how you're going to do this. Okay, you're just going to ease it out. And eventually, by the end of the round of bit of oval, it, it will all be out. It's a bit like a slip road on a motorway. It just eases itself in. So that's what you're going to do. And on the back, it will look a bit like that, where you've eased it in. And then eventually the whole width of that piece is, is actually stitched in. So what we need to do now is actually go on to a, a zigzag. 
So I just need to find my zigzag. Um, I would definitely go for about width of five, about five-ish, something like that. Um, and then I would bring your stitch length down to, well, let's try one and see how that looks. And I actually need to change my foot because I've got my quarter of an inch foot on. And that would break my needle as soon as I started. And we'll see how that looks. And if you're not sure, then just do a little test piece. So what we're going to do, just to make sure you're, you're, you're with it, we're just going to start about here and we're just going to catch the end of that piece in. I'm going to start my zigzag there and I'm going to gradually bring that piece out, okay? Um, I'll mm, try and think, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this fairly well and I'll bring it up to the camera from time to time so you can see. Um, and one of the things that's, let's see if that might help a wee bit, let's see. One of the things that you really want to be aware of is that um, you want to keep your, let's just see how that looks, not sure. Maybe I'll make that stitch length a little bit bigger. I've gone to 120. Let's see how that looks. I can't remember what I did before. Let's do a bit more. So this is something you want to practice before you start because you don't want your, your mat to be your tester piece. So look, I'm just easing that in. Can you see? And I'm just using the zigzag to bring those two pieces of um, cloth together if you like. And I've just got a thread there that I just want to get rid of because it's going to annoy me. Let's just, oh, it's got itself in one of the threads. Here we go, there we go. Get rid of that. There we are. And away we go. So when you come to the corners, you want to, the best way I've found is to make sure this is really slack so it's not uh, caught up anywhere and I'm actually almost going to push this into the bends and that way it should ease around the bend. If, if you don't do that it may start to build like a bowl, it'll come up like a bowl okay so you, again this is something you're going to sort of have a little test um, as you go along and you'll, you'll learn as you go um, how you can do that. So now I'm at the oval part, so the you know the end part of the oval, if you like, and I'm just making sure that I'm pushing my roll, if you like, into my oval, and I'm just butting those two edges up together. And you can see mine is slightly curving. Now one of the big tricks to doing this is that you must press it with a really steamy hot iron. Um, when you've done about three rows, two, two to three rows, okay? And just keep pressing, pressing, pressing. And like I say, when I come into these bits here where it's starting, there's a sharp curve, I'm just easing my, the roll part, this part here, into that bend. I'm not pleating it, at least I hope I'm not. I'm just kind of pushing it in, and making it fit, and making it go around in the straight. And like I said, um, a really hot steam iron will flatten all this out beautifully. Now, can you see how that's lifting up? So we absolutely do not want that, okay? And a steam iron would flatten that out beautifully. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to, I don't want to put my steam iron on, so um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to flatten this out as we go. I'm just gonna cut a few ends off here. And I'm just gonna lengthen my zigzag just a bit more. There we are. So on 1.5 now. Um, so now we've come round to where we started. And what you're doing now is covering up that little bit that you started with, that slip road, if you like. Um, and then it's it's all systems go. You're just literally now going round and round. It's the same circles, so it's ovals, isn't it? Um, and just make sure that this is nice and loose here. Um, 
and like I say, push this into it so it doesn't lift up. I mean, if you want a bowl, then, then don't do that. Keep it quite tight, and maybe that's something that you could experiment with. So literally now, I'm just going all the way around. I'll just speed up a little bit now. see how it's coming together and like I say we don't want it to be a bowl so we've just got to keep easing this fabric in so you're pushing that tube of fabric if you like into your mat and just make sure you're catching both of those edges I can bring my camera in so you can see. Uh, I can't bring the big one in. Let me try and bring the one in that we started off with and um, I'm going to try and angle it so you can see. Um, let me see where the camera is. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I've got something stuck on the mat. Here we go. Why can't I do this? There we are. Can you see now? how that's looking so you can see quite a lot there you can see where I started off and you can see the stitching so when I've done a bit more I'll um, I'll bring it back so you can see it let's pop it back there so I'll do a bit more and then I'll bring it into the camera so um, so like I say keep your um, roll that you've made your tube Nice and loose. You don't want it catching on anything. You just keep pushing that fabric in. And, and think of all the different sort of fabrics that you've got that you could use. Um, even if it's, like I said, if it's fat quarters that you might, may have uh, recently bought and you don't know quite what to do with them. But you only need 10 pieces to make this mat. You might want to um, uh, make a bigger piece. That's entirely up to you. You could, you could do a whole cushion point if you want. Now I've done an oval, but you could easily do um, a, a, a circle. Okay, so I'm just going to check my comments to see if I'm missing anything. Oh, Adrienne. Adrienne's my daughter. She said, love the purple. Um... A bowl would look nice matching your mat, definitely. And if I wasn't careful, um, Mary, that's what this would end up looking like. <laughs> it is a great stash buster, Sue. Yes, absolutely. And and it's also, if you're not sure what to do with your scraps, then it is um, a good way of using your scraps up. So that's, uh, that's fantastic. So let me just see if I can see any more comments. I, I'm pretty useless at seeing comments, but I think I've said... Um, hello to everybody um, sometimes I can't get them get it to work but anyway there we are so let, let's just ignore technology just just carry on um, so look like I say you're just pushing that in and we'll do, we'll do quite a bit I was going to try and hopefully finish it um, but you know what I'm like we're already 40 minutes in I've done nothing but chat she's in the weather bad oh and my absolute commiserations to anybody that's been affected by the floods and the, the terrible rivers that have burst their banks and oh I'm, I'm so sorry if you've been caught up in that um how awful um we're, we're very lucky where we are in Suffolk first of all we're, we're very flat um and the village I live in has enormous drainage ditches left over from sort of farming days. So, you know, I'm very lucky that I don't have to worry um, about that. And I'm, I'm very fortunate, I know, but my goodness me, I'm so sorry to the people that have been affected. Um, gosh, we have some crazy weather, don't we? So there we are. Let's just get this done. I'm gonna, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch my steam iron on. Um, and I'm going to give this a steam and then you'll get a proper view of what this looks like because um, it will with a steam flatten out 
um, so you can see it's quite it gives me quite a nice size. So we're literally just putting those two edges up together. So you're putting up the fold of one to the stitching line of the other. And we're just literally going round and round and round. Um, now, that if you look at the YouTube video that I put on the link of the event, you'll see that it's, um, like I said, it, you start off slightly differently in the middle. And that's the way lots and lots of people do that. And that's perfectly fine, whatever anybody wants to do. There's no rules in stitching. Um, it's just a super technique that I felt I could maybe make it a wee bit easier for people. So, let's just carry on. You'll have to stop me if, um, if you're bored with my stitching. <laughs> oh dear. But I, I tried to talk about the machine um, and I particularly chose one of my more quieter machines so all you so you, I didn't want you to hear just machining the whole time which of course you are really but, right, I'll tell you what we're gonna do let's leave it there um, and I'll get my steam iron in to get this all flattened out and um, we can always come back to it and finish it off and I, you know I'll always do that um, afterwards I always do and then you can see what that looks like so we've, we've only got much to do to be perfectly honest we'll see how we get on with flattening this out um, maybe I need a vote from you guys about whether you want me to completely and utterly finish this or whether you think no no I've got got it now I've got it got it. I know I understand what you're saying now I've got the technique I think I can do this so a really nice steamy iron look my stitching is not 100%. Never is when you're demonstrating, though. Uh, you, you can always, uh, you can always bank on that. <laughs> See how that's flattened that out now with a lovely steam. And <laughs> steam my glasses up as well. It's a bit dodgy just there. But there we are. So look, see how that's flattened that out. So now you can see what I mean about every two or three rows. Um, let's go back to the front, it's far more interesting. So you can see a nice steam and that's flattened that out beautifully. I quite like those blues and mauves together, don't you? Now, if you want me to, and I need you to tell me if you want me to finish this off now or whether, um, or whether you want me just to finish here. Let's have a look. We've got well over 30 people still watching. So, oh, it'll make a good shower mat, Marge. Yes. That is genius. Because it's so soft. It, because you look, you've got, you've got four layers of fabric, plus you've got four layers of wadding, haven't you? I know it's squished down and we've steamed it within an inch of its life, but it's still nice and spongy. So, yes, it would make a nice bath mat. Obviously, you want to make it a wee bit bigger. But I also think it'd be nice... I mean, I love the, I love these colours. Right? I'm a bit guilty as charged for loving bright things, um, but uh, it does make me feel cheerful. But can you imagine in January when those first daffodils come out? I know it's a little way off, when those first daffodils come out, and we want to put them on a mat, a table somewhere, then to stand them on something nice and bright, or go for something a little bit more subtle, <laughs> and use your blues, uh, the blue tones. Um, oh, Margaret says carry on. Margaret, you're in charge. You're in charge. <laughs> oh dear. Now, I was talking earlier today because I did a Facebook Live for the So Inspiring page. Oh, it was great fun. Technology got the better of me at some points in there. Um, but uh, I was saying that I, I own eight machines. Now, you've got to understand that I've been stitching since I was four, so that's a lot of years, 58 years, nearly 60 years. And um, over the years, I've had machines 
given to me. My mum gave me the most beautiful machine. Gosh, I must have been about 30. Um, I used to have a Krista Rossman. Does anybody remember a Krista Rossman? And I made all of the other dresses I used to make for Harrods and Harvey Nichols and, and Neiman Marcus. Oh my gosh, wasn't I lucky? You have no idea how lucky I am to have done that. And I did them all on my little Krista Rossman. And for memory, I think it was mechanical. I don't think it was computerised because, I mean, gosh, if we're going back 40, 40 years. 40 years when I had the Frister Rossman, perhaps even more. Um, and it, it made all those beautiful dresses. Um, I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> I just put them under the machine, did it for me, smashing. Um, and, and then, so I'd had that for years, and then, and then it, it gave up the ghost. It said, I've had enough, I, I've too much. So then my mum gave me a Janome, a Janome uh, new home which was really, really state-of-the-art um, because it was computerised and it had like um, sort of discs that you could put in the side to do embroidery with. And you know, I, I, I think I probably used them, um, just to make sure I'm on the right camera because I'm talking to you, uh, I probably used them once, isn't that bad? But I've got everything, I've still got everything that she gave me. Um, and it's so old now that it's, it's yellow, it's gone completely yellow. It sits in my cupboard behind me, I love it. Because it's seen me go through so many things, making all the children's clothing, oh, awesome. And of course I ran my own business for years, um, dressmaking and doing alterations, and, and that machine helped me do all that. And then, um, Gosh, it was only maybe about five years ago, so you can tell I used it for a lot of years. But I bought my second Janome, um, because I'd already had one and I liked it, so I, I bought another one. And that was a bit more sort of up to date. And um, I still got that, that's somewhere about, that might be in the cupboard. Yeah, it's in the cupboard as well. Hasn't, hasn't been put out to grass, it's just in the cupboard. Um, and then I was lucky enough to demonstrate the Elna on the Chanda. So I've got two of the little Elmas, um, and there's super little machines. Um, and then about, about, oh, let me think, where are we? October. So about 10 months ago, I thought, you know what, I need to have a really good machine that will help me do embroidery because I want to do lots of embroidery um, you know really sort of specialized embroidery and this machine does that it has a you know, bigger embroidery unit and um, to be honest um, I used it only for the second time yesterday so I'm still sort of getting to grips with that um, and then of course a couple of months ago was a couple of months ago I got the stitch which is on the new machine at Crafters Companion and that sits down there that sits down there and that's just been a joy to have um, and you might say why aren't you using it now but this, this, this isn't about work this is just you and me having a chat getting to know each other and you learning something, maybe how to make a spongy mat, and me just having a chat. So this is not work. So I figured I wouldn't wear, I'm wearing grey. And that's what I thought. Um, keep it separate. Sometimes you have to, as much as I absolutely love my job, it's good sometimes to keep them separate. Anyway, it's just you and me, isn't it? It's not TV, none of that. So look, I've chatted away, and then we come to the end, I could speed up a bit. Look, look, that's the tail. So we're nearly there. I'll have to uh, press the button on my steam iron. Now my steam iron, it's a Philips, right? And it's amazing. And it's a, such a joy because it switches itself off. So it's flashing at the moment because it's switching itself off. So I need to go and press the button to tell it no. So 
There we go. Switch it back on again. So that's a joy, isn't it? Because I remember once leaving my iron on. In fact, Abigail's done the same. Leaving my iron on and coming back to um, a really nasty mess. Not not having to put fire or anything. But it had melted my, <laughs> melted my mat. <laughs> Hence I've got, I have mine on a silicon mat now. So, um, so I have a silicon mat so that protects it. And then I have the you know, the thermal stuff inside my, my bag that you may have seen. And I've also got another piece of thermal stuff that goes on my little stand there. So I'm, you know, I'm, I don't, uh, I, I take lots of precautions. <laughs> oh dear. Right, here, here we go. So let's just finish this last bit. Because actually this last bit, you do the opposite do you remember at the beginning we tucked the tail in and we came out you know, like a slip road, just sort of slides in. So we're going to do the opposite. So when I get to about there, I'm just going to take this in gently into the mat. Um, and I'll show you. I won't let you guess. Nothing worse, is there? So let's just zoom around here. Now, I want to be honest with you guys. I could have made this in, in five minutes. Um, but I've kept the noise of the machine down by going a little bit slower. So when you have a go, just put your foot down. Just remember to ease these round bits in. That's the only bit. And as, you, as this gets bigger, so there's less, uh, less worry about this curving, okay? And the other thing to remember, and this is really important, is to always make sure, so this is a good size, all right? It's a good manageable size for you, for me, for, for the machine that you're using, doesn't matter what machine, it's a manageable size, okay? If you've got any bigger, I would suggest you put something under here to support it, uh, some books, or if you've got a table, extension table, use that, but it, need, it will need support, but also to make sure that you're always machining this side of your mat, okay? This side. That might be common sense to you, but I don't want you to, to machine here because it would mean all of this was going to be under your machine. So always have it so this just this little tube piece is the bit that you're stitching. So we're just coming up to the last bit now. So just zoom up. Now this is where I'm going to start tucking that tail in. I'm going to switch to the other camera and you might, might see a little bit better. Who can tell? But look, there's my little end, and I'm just literally going to tuck it under my mat so it ends up like that. Can you see how that how that is? I'm not even going to try and move the camera because I'm not very good at it. So I'm just literally going to tuck it in so the tail goes underneath the mat. And then you can trim that all back if you want to. So I'll just finish that bit. I'll go back to the other camera because that's a little bit more interesting, isn't it? Um, so we're just going to start tucking this in. And just you're going to put the tail under the mat. Just going to make sure, yeah. So you've got the right side facing you. So you're tucking, you're tucking the tail under. And you're just, it's probably four inches, something like that. Four inches. And I'm just going to tuck it in and then machine it, okay? I'll show you. I want to see some of these. I want you to make some. Promise me you will. Promise me. So now I've gone past the end, I'll show you. I've gone past the end, and I'm just going about a half an inch longer, and I'll show you when I've done that. And then I've caught, I know I've caught everything then. Just a little cut of the stitches. frightened to death of this machine and that's me done and hopefully let's just switch it off let's not give it a chance to blink at me um hopefully now look i'm just going to take you to this camera so you can see a little bit better so look can you see i've tucked it under hopefully you'll see you can see that can't you you can see how i've tucked it under there and on the right side, that's how it looks. Now we could make it a wee bit better, 
but I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. And then what you can do is just trim that bit off um, and then you can, you know, make it a little bit neater. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad you can see that because it's important. And then the piece that you started with, do you know, it's a rough old oval I've done there. It's really a bit rubbish. I'm glad you can't see it too well. You can <laughs> cut this off and just neaten that up if you want. Um, and this one as well, just sort of trim it away. Um, the, the, the idea of that is that it will sit a little bit better on your, on your table um, and just sort of keep trimming it back. Um, and I think I'm, I'm quite happy with that. And just neaten that up a little bit. So I'm gonna bring my steam iron in again. It's, it's, did you see how it's kept its some um, flatness? Um, I'm just going to try and sort that little piece out there, but I think it's a lost cause. So I think if you're at all worried about your centre oval, is to, um, glasses have steamed up, <laughs> is to um, quilt this so it's really stabilised and really lovely. But I, I'm, I, that, that'll do for us, won't it? Eh? And I'll be proud to put that on my table. Definitely. So there we are. Oof. Let's just make sure we're still in the land of the living with this Facebook Live. Oh, isn't Facebook Lives are lovely? Oh, but they do have a habit of going wrong technology wise. We shouldn't keep going on about it, but you know, when we want to do it nicely for everybody, um, it's quite frustrating when it goes wrong. Um, so, anyway. There we go. If you want to see how I made this little bag, go on there. There's just below the Facebook Live you're looking at now, there's one I shared from this morning. And, and I show you how to make this little um, little Japanese bag. And I put all my quilting clips in there. Um, I had one that was made out of our last year's Christmas fabric. And um, it, it, it needed to be replaced. And the great thing about this, I've gone off tangent, haven't I? But the great thing about this is that it's reversible. So if I take all my clips out, I could actually reverse it and have the bright side. Might do that for a little while. I'll put all these back in there. Whose idea was that? So there we are. So that is the little tutorial. I'm sorry I started on the wrong camera. It happens. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen. And, and now you can go ahead and make um, make a couple of these mats. I'm quite happy with these. This is really quite nice and tonal, isn't it? I really, I'm really enjoying looking at that. And then I've got the really zingy bright one goes with my my clip bags. <laughs> Who tell the colours I like? So there we are, guys. I'm really pleased that you could stop by. I'm going to say go goodbye now. I'm going to go and watch Doctor Who. Is anybody watching Doctor Who? Um, and also, there's another one on tonight as well, isn't it? Is it Killing Eve or is that Tuesday? I can't remember. Anyway, have a good evening. I'm going to sign off now. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you later. We need to do another Facebook Live. Tell me what you want me to do, because that would be great. Okay, enjoy. Thank you.